So I'm in here washing this tank out, getting it nice and clean so that I can make a half decent video for you. Start out with a new tank. I haven't cleaned this tank. It was a Mambo Assassin Boat tank. And this is a relatively new label, believe it or not. But I probably haven't cleaned this particular tank in so many years, like, who knows, maybe a decade. Anyway, I'm sitting here thinking the things I do for these people on YouTube. And it was right at that moment that I had it in the sink here and tipped it, had a bunch of water up on the side and drenched myself. So there you go. A little bit of blooper action for you guys. Well, here we go again. I'm going to do a demonstration video for Orthoporus ornatus. Tank is all nice and clean now. I had some Mambo assassin bugs in there before. And I'm going to walk you through setting up an Orthoporus tank and show you real quick what Orthoporus are. This is the gold variety of the species, the Texas color form. There's another color form or two or three down in Texas, but this is the one commonly referred to as Orthoporus ornatus, gold. You can see that when I was pulling the specimens out for the video, they secreted on my hand. That's a defensive secretion. And it's got a very strong chemical smell and assumingly it tastes horrible and if somebody or an animal, a predator, were to consume one of these millipedes, no doubt they would get at the very least a bad stomach ache. The taste alone would be enough of course for you to spit it out. Now handling any of the US millipedes isn't really an issue. These secretions will wash off to some degree. Um, I do recommend that if you are having children handle them or you are a young person that you go and wash your hands before you forget to. You wouldn't want to go and grab something to eat and then have some of these secretions get on your food. I haven't heard of any um, any firsthand information or even really read anything about people getting sick from you know, getting this in their mouth or anything. But um, general rule of caution, keep the millipedes out of your eyes, nose, and throat. And if you have cuts on your hand, I would recommend that you wear a pair of gloves if you're handling these, and just generally wash your hands after handling. Of course, if you could smell what I smell right now, very strong chemical smell, um, it's usually a reminder enough in itself that hands should be washed before you go and touch any of your food. Now that's the Texas color form right there, the more common one. The other one that we see a lot. We used to see this other one more. This is what I call the Sonoran Orthoporus. This is the ones that the color form more common from Arizona. They range from sort of a maroonish color in younger specimens to a darker color like this one here. They will get considerably longer than this. Watch of course the wave-like patterns there. Let me move the camera just a little bit. Bear with me. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see one of the things that makes millipedes so special. The wave-like pattern as they move. Two pairs of legs per segment. And of course, this is a very large arthropod by the standards of most people living in cities and whatnot. Some people will call that the chocolate form of Orthoporus. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to make a tank for Orthoporus species. These species do like a slightly drier habitat. And you can see my lid back here. This is a very ventilated screened lid. And I do recommend that these desert millipedes 
do come from more arid places. It's not a forest down there. You will sometimes find them in forested areas throughout the drier southwest states that they occur in, which are from Arizona through New Mexico to Texas. Um, they probably range outside of that just a little bit, but those are the states that they are generally found in in numbers. And usually they come out during the monsoon rains. These are dry places where the rains come on a seasonal basis sometime between June and September. And that's when these millipedes emerge, often in very large numbers. People describe finding them, you know, every few inches. I've seen it myself where I've been down in Arizona on rainy nights and the millipedes are, you can't even hardly walk through the areas where they are all emerging in. And so now I'm going to talk a little bit about the substrate for these desert millipedes. As I said, they do like it a little bit drier than most of the other round millipede species that are in the hobby. I've got my own millipede mix that I sell on the bugsandcyberspace.com website. It's a combination of topsoil and compost soil and sand and peat moss and calcium carbonate. Some people will crush eggshells in there. Some of the commercially available foods also have calcium in them. And even some of the foods that we eat ourselves, certain vegetables and stuff have uh, amounts of calcium in them. So there's that. And then I also have a, a bunch of sand here too. Um, this is sort of optional. You don't really need it, but it sort of depends on how much moisture, how frequently you're going to put moisture into your tank. And we're going to talk about moisture levels here a little bit more in a moment. But first I'm going to put the sand in here, or I'm sorry, the substrate in here. And spread that around. And you can see that that offered a few inches in depth. And then I'm going to put some of the sand in here too because these desert millipedes do come from sandy habitats. They're often in very compact rocky habitats that are sandy as well. But they're also often a little bit scant on resources in those environments, and so we want to offer them a little more. Now, I should mention also that this species is not one that reproduces in captivity. Um, sorry about the dirty hands there. I'm just going to work through it. Um, these orthoporus, unlike so many of the other species that we keep as pets in the millipede hobby, they do not reproduce well in captivity. There have been a few people who have claimed over the years that um, they have reproduced them, and um, that may or may not be true. I've read a couple accounts that, you know, people have posted online, but they never seem to follow up with additional posts that span over time where they show the individuals growing. I think I saw one once where it seemed to indicate that, but even that person sort of fell off after a while and stopped um, providing information. So in general, this is not a species that will reproduce in captivity, whether or not it has been done a few times, hard to say. But um, people have theorized that they need a deeper substrate. People have theorized that they need it drier. People have theorized that you need to stop feeding them for you know, most of the year and to let the tank dry out completely, um, you know, hoping that it, that those variables will help to sort of mimic what happens in nature. But despite all of these theories, nobody seems to be able to reproduce them repeatedly in captivity. And so you should just generally assume that um, this is not a species that you're going to be reproducing. They are, however, rather long-lived. You will generally expect from a millipede about this size that it should live three to five years. And uh, I've had them live that long as adults in the past. Um, they can tolerate an enormous amount of dryness, and in fact, too much moisture in the tank will harm them. 
That's why with most millipedes, while you will have a lid that is not ventilated, it might not have any holes in it at all. You might normally rely on just that little gap of airspace. It's not quite an airtight seal in many tanks or you have a few holes up in the top here. Well, with these orthoporous, you do definitely want a screened lid like this. And if you get a cage that doesn't have holes in the lid, what you might do is punch some holes in it. And then you can always, if you're worried about fungus gnats or other little pests getting in there, you can always drop sheets of paper towel or wax paper or something like this pressed between the lid and your tank, your container base, whatever kind of cont container you're running. And uh, that will keep that will keep um, small fungus gnats or forward flies or even mites from getting into your tank. So one other thing that I'd like to mention here is that um, because this is a species that comes from drier areas, what people will often do is just every few days just come in and sort of mist the substrate, the top layer here. Now that works just fine. Um, generally what what people have learned though is that it's best to keep the lower levels a little bit more on the moist side and then the top levels dry for this species. Um, this is a mostly surface active species. They will burrow down if they feel like it. I'm going to put a few more millipedes in here so that you guys, while I'm talking, can watch them moving around. And uh, one of the tricks is to pour water just into one side of the tank, like this. You wet down just the one side, maybe bring it out here a little bit, about a third of the tank, I would say. And what will happen is that, you know, this is a tank that I just set up and all the, in the substrate ingredients were a little bit on the moist side. But what will happen over time as the moisture in this uh, substrate evaporates, it will come out here. The upper layers will lose the moisture quicker and the lower layers will stay moist. And so by uh, wetting down just a third of the tank here, what happens is what's called a moisture gradient occurs. And so this would be the wettest side. A lot of that moisture would sort of saturate across the tank, but not necessarily over to the other side completely. And it might go on the lowest layers here, sort of a diagonal like this, to where it was drier up here. And by creating a moisture gradient in a tank, what happens is that it gives the millipedes the option of going to the area where they are the most comfortable you will often see them congregating more on the moist side and people say it's well it's because um you know shortly after you add water it's because they were getting dehydrated a little bit um people do also theorize that if you want to breed this species that you need it to be you know at least six inches deep but they'll say people failed to reproduce them and so uh the jury's still out on what uh, what is ideal for them. And, you know, because they don't reproduce in captivity, people have long wondered if any of the um, care options that we're providing to them are, are ideal for them. But this is a surface active species. They are the largest species that are available in the United States in terms of being a native or domestic species. And, uh, because they're always up on the substrate, because they're large, because they're colorful like this, they really are a wonderful species. Now, there were some wood ingredients and some organic or composted ingredients in my mix here. I will, additionally for this species, they're not quite as dependent probably on the leaves. There aren't a lot of leaves in many of the areas where these desert species occur, but I will 
still break leaves like this up on the substrate surface for them. And I've got some oak leaves in here and some maple leaves in here. It's not necessary that you have both, but when you do have some options, it never hurts to offer them options. Another thing that I do recommend for desert species like this is a water dish. This water dish here, I have dropped a few pebbles into it. I'm going to uh, make an adjustment on my camera here. So you can see that I've got some pebbles sunk in there. And I'm going to also get some water and dump that in there. Now you want a very shallow water dish because the concern is that the millipedes will drown. This one here is the right size for this particular species. I've sunk the pebbles in there so that they can sort of walk across it and take a drink if they want to. Um, you know, for this number of millipedes, this five gallon tank, I'm not really gonna keep them in here. I'm just kind of setting this up as a show tank or a display tank for you at the moment, just making a demonstration. I'm gonna move them back into their normal bins here after the video, to be honest. But um, this is the right sized uh, uh, water dish, probably for a 10 gallon tank. It seems a little large for this five gallon tank right here. And you'll see the millipedes crawling up the sides of the tank here and everything. They're just sort of getting used to these new surroundings. Um, they're less inclined to burrow this species than other species, which means that as pet keepers, we get to see them more frequently. A lot of people will run a shallower substrate. And the reason for that is that they're going to see their millipedes more often. I have at bug zoos and museums seen them just run a rock substrate, sort of a gravel substrate down in the bottom on top of a layer of dirt. And they will at times put hides in there for you know, either cork bark or, you know, bits of wood like this for the millipedes to crawl under. The millipedes are pretty happy crawling under those. Um, these are some broken pieces right here. I've got some better examples out here I'll grab real quick. So these, these half log hides, it's a half log. You can sink them into the substrate a little bit. Careful not to squish your millipedes. Just like that. And then there's cork bark like this. Um, these break rather easily, or you can saw them if you want to. You put those in there on the surface as well. I didn't have a small piece. Super handy, but you get the idea. Besides that, uh, Really standard offerings. I love to offer these cucumber. Uh, they really like the melons. Uh, eat the melon, leave a little bit on the rind for the millipedes. Apples, I feed them carrots sometimes. And I also feed them the fish food pellets. Which I'll show you. These right here, fish food pellets. Dog food, cat food, protein-based pet foods. They're not, um, they're not real picky about what they eat, and these are really good feeders. Um, I fed them grapes. I fed them pretty much any kind of produce over the years, and they'll nibble at it. Um, of course, like with other millipedes, if they don't eat the food after a couple days and you're starting to see it mold, uh, you want to pull it out. You don't want to leave it in there if it's starting to mold, not because it will harm the millipedes. They're constantly feeding on things in nature that are uh, molding in some way and covered with, you know, microscopic pretty much everything. But um, the mold could spread through the top layer of your substrate, and that's both unsightly and can also prevent them from wanting to eat their food if the mold is too pervasive. So other than that, I think that's just about it. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching.